Children across the planet are seemingly becoming obsessed with online content across different platforms, and many parents are fearing that there are dire and long-lasting psychological side effects to this obsession. Teachers across the country have been coming out about this generation and their lack of respect and basic learning skills, and parents have been seemingly perplexed as to why their kids don't listen to them or act like normal children have in the past, and many are directly blaming online media. That's why today we're going to be looking in and examining the tragedy of Generation Alpha. An online video series has been cited as inducing weird effects on the children who watch it. This series is a strange, animated war epic by the name of Skibbity Toilet. Parents have been increasingly worried about the series of videos and the way that their children act after consuming it, with the novel sensation being coined Skibbity Toilet Syndrome. It's no secret that Generation Alpha is exposed to intense amounts of harmful content on the internet, whether that be through YouTube, TikTok, or YouTube Kids. Things like the Elsa Gay controversy come to mind, a phenomenon of incredibly harmful and inappropriate videos on YouTube using popular cartoon characters to portray increasingly perverted and degenerate actions. Initially, these videos usually featured live-action actors in cheap costumes of Spider-Man and Elsa, but after word spread of its influence, YouTube took action and removed most channels involved. This controversy would mark the first real time that people started to realize the content on YouTube might be harmful to young audiences. Elsagate has made a return in recent years, and is still out there and affecting young audiences to this day, for the worse. The modern incarnation of Elsagate is less about Spider-Man and Elsa, but more about modern internet trend characters, including a certain source filmmaker head sticking out of a toilet. From there, attempts have been made to get rid of this content, with it only really helping in a mild way at the end of the day. However, a new threat allegedly rose in these times, that being Skibbity Toilet Syndrome. Parents across the world started becoming increasingly worried when they realized their young children sitting in laundry baskets singing the seemingly gibberish song from the videos. Across the internet, more and more videos popped up of children seemingly entranced by the Skibbity Toilet. Through this, mass concern started to spread among parents, mainly in Indonesia. Soon, TikTok started popping up, warning Indonesian parents about the dangers of Skibbity Toilet. Concern was spread farther and farther. Then on July 11th, 2023, an Indonesian YouTuber by the name of Vale XD Official created a video where he reacted to kids pretending to be Skibbity Toilets. In this video, he officially coined the term Skibbity Toilet Syndrome. This original video has since been removed. So, how did it reach the United States? Well, Skibbity Toilet isn't only popular overseas. The series is famous worldwide, but especially here in the USA. Given the way that the internet works, word spread fast about Skibbity Toilet Syndrome to American parents, leading to a lot of worry. Videos started popping up of American children seemingly affected by the disorder, which is when Gen Z and late millennials heard about it. People have very, very quickly become enraged upon viewing this content leading to some pretty horrendous comments across the internet. The video of these kids spread from Facebook to TikTok to YouTube Shorts, and of course, the dreaded Instagram Reels. From there, Skibbity Toilet Syndrome has become a commonly used phrase among the internet. But is any of this actually real? Should you be worried for those kids, or is it not a big deal? Well, the answer may shock you. Lots of content that children consume on YouTube is inherently harmful to their development and attention spans. That is no secret. But is Skibbity Toilet an example of that? Well, honestly, not really. The Gen Z detractors used the term brain rot to describe what was happening to these children, but is it all brain rot? Well, let's look into the definition of the term. To quote Urban Dictionary, brain rot is a word that some might use when referring to constantly thinking about a topic, person, or place, or thing. It's a spoof word that's relatively close to the definition of hyperfixation. Both words stand for the same meaning. However, brain rot isn't meant to be taken as literally. There aren't any brains rotting here. What is cited as skibbity brain rot is the song and the act of pretending to be a toilet, which is something that people are genuinely really, really concerned about. However, if you look at it with a critical eye, it all starts to kind of fall apart. What is seen as skibbity toilet syndrome is just children playing. That's literally it. Kids like to pretend to be things that they watch, it's really as simple as that. However, what about these videos of kids having tantrums when the thought of Skibbity Toilet being taken away is brought up? Videos like these have been shown as an example as to how bad Skibbity Toilet is for the minds of children, but let's look into it a little deeper. Well, yes, upon initially viewing a video like this, it can be very shocking and mildly disturbing. However, you must realize that videos like this, 9 times out of 10, are an older brother or parent telling the kid, be crazy and talk about Skibbity Toilet which then leads to the videos that you see. So to be clear, Skibbity Toilet Syndrome is not a real thing, and children's minds aren't being hijacked by the Silly Source Filmmaker video. But does that mean that little kids should be watching Skibbity Toilet? Well, absolutely not. 
As stated earlier, Skippy Toy is a very, very violent series, and it isn't anything but entertainment to the child. Nothing educational or moral is involved, and honestly, that's kind of concerning. Some of the kids who are big fans of the series are really, really young, and shouldn't be watching such violent content, since it's simply not good for them. But they could be watching worse things. I want to speak to any parents or older siblings in the audience who have little kids in their lives that use YouTube. Most content made and targeted towards young children on this platform is genuinely very, very harmful and horrible content. Even ignoring things like Elsagate, individual YouTubers like Lankybox and all their copycats are harmful for children. You may not know what this content's like. Maybe you see it from the corner of your kid's iPad, but you never really look much deeper since you see that it looks family friendly enough and you don't pay any mind. This is what kids are watching. Today we are going to escape the back room! This is a crazy back rooms game where we explore the- Get ready to watch the best amazing digital circus YouTube shorts ever! You will see crazy transformations, super funny memes, and even some top secret Lanky Box songs and animations. Like and subscribe or Lanky Box will cry. Watch this! Oh. I am Skibbity Riz! Oh, no. Like you Skibbity Riz on Adam to ruin his day! What? Hey Van Bolina, wanna go out? What do you say? This is crazy! Foxy. I can't watch something like this for more than like 20 seconds without feeling exhausted and overwhelmed. Imagine being a young child with an incredibly young, naive, and malleable mind. You spend hours a day watching this overstimulating, substanceless content, and eventually that sets up your expectations for entertainment. Suddenly, playing with toys and using your imagination doesn't give you that same amount of fun that watching the funny purple hair man on the iPad does. Traditional children's media is incredibly slow and boring because it's nowhere near as fast paced and over edited as these YouTubers, leading to what essentially turns into an addiction. Adults and teens often have bad impulse control and easily given to instant gratification, even with the knowledge that it's bad for you. I'm guilty of it. I think literally everybody in the age range of millennial to gen alpha is. However, it's more of a matter of how we can manage the impulse and keep your consumption of whatever seemingly harmful vice you have to a minimum. However, children do not have the skill of moderation. They're simply not developed enough. This is why these channels exist. They exist to capitalize on the fact that children don't really have a choice and can be very easily persuaded to watch whatever it is these YouTubers want them to watch, if their titles and thumbnails are clickable enough. I grew up using YouTube, and if you're familiar with my content then you'll know that that is very, very clear. I saw a lot of horrible content growing up. Really, really nasty and scary things that no kid should have seen. But many, many others happen to experience the exact same things. I've been lucky enough to make a career out of my experience with that sort of content here on YouTube. So I'm very thankful that I did watch what I watched. However, early Gen Z kids grew up watching the early days of YouTube, which is completely different from the slot that Gen Alpha is exposed to on a daily basis. YouTube was just fundamentally a different website. With the way that profit was managed, there wasn't much of a profit incentive. We had creepy art projects, weird commercials, scary animations, and of course, piles and piles of weird fetish content all over the platform. However, that content wasn't being pushed on us or marketed towards us. We just happened to find it in most cases. I'm by no means implying that we didn't get clickbaited too, because of course we did. But back in the day, children content was made completely differently. It wasn't even a business venture yet. Most videos made for kids were made by kids or by kids' parents. EvanTubeHD comes to mind, but comparing the pace of these old kid-friendly videos to new ones shows a stark difference in almost every single aspect. The editing, pace, sound, performance, all of it was much slower and more traditional back in the day, and provided wholesome fun. Were we learning anything when watching EvanTube look at clay angry birds? Well, no but it wasn't harmful to our brains. A classic trope of early YouTube clickbait was bright colors in the thumbnails, and I'll admit, this worked on me as a kid. I remember clicking on some Shane Dawson videos with bright ass thumbnails and wacky colors only to watch five seconds then click off since I just didn't like him. I bring this up not to say that we had it so much better and that we never had stupid brain rock content, but more so to make the point that we weren't being completely actively targeted and taken advantage of by greedy people with low moral compasses. People in my generation look at Skibbity Toilet and say that the next generation is root. Gen Alpha's doomed, there's nothing we can do to save them, because they watch a silly source filmmaker video series. I've seen this viewpoint all over the internet, and each time it just doesn't make sense to me. For the people who hold this viewpoint, look back at what we grew up with. It was the same shit, if not even worse than Skibbity Toilet. Like you're trying to tell me you didn't grow up with mindless source filmmaker animations, right? Stupid catchphrase memes, absolute brain rot songs that we would sing with our friends. It's the exact same 
thing is Skibbity Toilet. When me and my friends were little, we would sing stupid songs like What Does the Fox Say, Gangnam Style, and all those different Minecraft song parodies. You name it. Sure, it was stupid. Sure, it was brainless, but it was harmless fun. And it's the exact same thing as kids playing in laundry baskets and singing a goofy gibberish song with their friends. Hell, it's better than watching those K-Foria videos than playing them out in real life. Yeesh. These Gen Alpha kids unfortunately have their own version of that, but that's a video for another day. Regardless, we weren't really any different from the kids of this generation. When I see like 17 year olds in my generation complaining about how kids like Skibbity Toilet and how much better our videos were when we grew up, it really makes me see that we're going down the same path as boomers and millennials. If you look at the way that there's this manufactured war on millennials being cringe towards Gen Z and how gutturally out of touch and cringe these people are, who to be clear aren't even that much older than some Gen Z people, just proves to me that we're next. We're gonna be the cringe millennials to these new kids. And I just feel like, aren't we better than this? Now, for those who say that Gen Alpha kids are doomed, they aren't actually completely wrong. Obviously, let's be clear what we're talking about here. When referring to Gen Alpha, I don't mean every single kid in the generation. Not at all. However, we're looking at the whole of things, using mostly anecdotal evidence. This is because there hasn't really been enough research done, given how young these kids are and how novel a phenomenon this whole thing is. Parents have reported on social media that their children are progressively getting worse and worse attention spans. This also seemingly is reflected in ADHD diagnosis being at an all-time high. However, it's believed that a lot of people don't actually suffer from ADHD on a neurological level, but instead, these symptoms of attention deficiency are a product of the media that they consume online and how social media hacks your dopamine receptors. Of course, the counter-argument provided is that we have better means of diagnosis now. We've made huge improvements in being able to find ADHD in people who otherwise wouldn't have gotten a diagnosis in the past. I'm no medical professional, clearly, so I can't really give my input on the situation. However, parents are concerned and worried about what's going on with their children, because not only are the 4 to 9 year olds being targeted by this type of content, the babies and toddlers aren't safe either. Coco Melon is a famous young children's entertainment titan. The channel started in 2006 and went under the title ABC Kids. Initially, their style of content was pretty bog standard for 2000s kids entertainment. If you grew up around the time, you'd definitely recognize this art style of 2D animation trying to look like a watercolor style children's book. Something along the lines of the hungry caterpillar coming to life and starting to move around. The channel was completely innocent back in the day, creating content around education and nursery rhymes. They weren't a YouTube titan by any means, but had some decent views. They continued to make videos in this style for years, until April 8th of 2016 when they switched from 2D animation to using primarily CGI characters. And this is around the point where they started to blow up. They changed around their visual style, but still focused on nursery rhymes, and soon started using these baby characters, which to most are mildly uncanny, but to the target audience were incredibly captivating. Cocomelon grew and grew and grew, but almost in the shadows, since many YouTube users weren't aware of what babies are watching. However, something big changed when in 2019, PewDiePie realized that Cocomelon would soon surpass him in subscribers, which led him and his fans to joke about having another subscriber war against the children entertainment giant. Around this time, wider audiences started to realize the growth of this channel and how seemingly captivated young children seem to be by it. And to be clear, this channel is absolutely huge. As of 2023, they have 33 videos videos with over 1 billion views. But why? Why does this channel in particular have so much success? There are hundreds and thousands of YouTube channels who do the same thing. Help, who do it even better? But why does Cocomelon captivate so many young people? Unfortunately, the answer isn't that they just have the best quality around. You may have seen this coming already, but Cocomelon takes advantage of its young viewers in a very similar way that Lanky Box style channels do as well. Cocomelon employs some very, very questionable methods of capturing the attention of their young audiences. The most notorious and documented example is the pace of their videos. You see, Cocomelon is composited and edited in a geniusly intentional way. Cocomelon uses really fast cuts and high paced editing alongside a constantly moving camera. This is a really, really good way to captivate a young audience, which is why they're seemingly hypnotized by this content. This alongside bright colors and high pitched songs lead to the perfect concoction of visual and audio stimulation. This leads children, who barely even know what they're consuming, to become enamored. But as stated earlier, the effects on the mind are suspected to be incredibly dangerous, making children addicted to Cocomelon and making all their types of media incredibly boring and under stimulating. So this video is sponsored. Videos like these are incredibly time consuming and hard to make, so having sponsors like the one we have today is incredibly important. This video is sponsored by Dave, the banking app made for you. Dave is a banking app on a mission to build products that level the financial playing field. 
Dave fights for the underdog. They started Dave for one reason. The banks, they're not built for people like you and I, and they knew that we deserved better. Like David slaying Goliath, they're taking on big banks and their predatory ways. It all started with overdrafts. Americans pay billions in overdraft fees, every year alone, including a whopping 11 billion in 2021. Their first mission at Dave was to make these predatory fees a thing of the past, by spotting people some cash, without charging them the standard $35. But why? Because it's simply the right thing to do. We all need a little financial help sometimes, especially if you live in the beautifully expensive city of New York as I do. And that's why I really appreciate that Dave doesn't do credit checks or late fees, making it a real for the little guy service. When you download Dave, you could get up to $500 within five minutes. No credit checks, no late fees. Download the Dave app now or go to dave.com slash Raimundo. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve member FDIC. So join the millions of people who've already downloaded the Dave app to make their finances easier. In fact, Dave has actually helped its customers avoid over $2.5 billion in overdraft fees since 2017, which is pretty insane. Download Dave today at dave.com slash Raymundo. That's dave.com slash Raymundo. Now enjoy the rest of the video, and thank you very, very much to Dave for helping this video happen. Well, having a sponsor really helps things out. Thank you very much. I can't stress enough the importance of playing with toys as a kid. To adults who maybe don't remember exactly what it's like, I need to remind you that children have the most amazing imaginations. You can give a kid a couple of cool toys to play with and they'll create these vast, incredible stories spanning months or even years of play. Incredible battles of good versus evil that an adult could never think of. This is an incredibly important thing for kids as it lets them be creative and entertain themselves without the need for ultra-stimulating digital content. This is how it's been for all of history. Now, I don't want to sound like some old guy shaking his fist, saying all the problems of the world are thanks to that damn phone, but like, that's not exactly wrong. The prospect of a child not having as much interest in creating their own stories and playing with their toys or playing with imagination and friends is genuinely scary and heartbreaking to me. I could talk at length about how kids shouldn't have smartphone technology until they're at least 13, but I feel as though that's a topic for another video. But if there are any parents watching, wondering whether or not you should get your kid a smartphone, I highly warn against it. I personally had a flip phone until I was 16 years old. And despite being made fun of at times, and wishing that I had a smartphone, I am so very glad that I grew up without having a smartphone on me at all times. And your kids will thank you if you decide to do the same thing. To grow up not addicted to something that you have constant simulation on is an incredibly important thing. Despite my teenage years being in the 2010s, I lived it using 2000s technology flip phone, and a 2005 iPod for my music, and sometimes I'd bring around a 3DS if I wanted to play a game. And that was it. And honestly, it was great. You may be skeptical about the truth of any of this. You may think that the next generation is going to be perfectly fine, and of course, lots of kids will be. Many Gen Alpha kids will go on to live very fulfilling and great lives and achieve many incredible things in life, as would be for any generation. They will also go on to be the most technologically gifted generation we've ever had. However, a disturbing trend has arose that has been worrying teachers across the country. Generation Alpha is having a really, really hard time in school, and as reported by many teachers, they're falling behind, majorly. Reading, writing, math, history. All of it has been reported to be incredibly difficult for the majority of Gen Alpha school kids. Again, this evidence is anecdotal, mostly stemming from videos that teachers have posted on the internet. And there are lots of these videos all across the country and the planet. If you use the internet frequently, you may have heard of this. And the outrage and confusion surrounding it. But why could all this be? Is this just because Gen Alpha is dumber than everyone else? Well, no. Not at all. This generation is just in an incredibly hard place to be. The world is more divided than ever. Many lack a sense of community completely, and the American school system is fundamentally flawed, and that fact is being shown more and more every single day. But even then, Generation Z also had to go through a lot of these things, and many are still going through this terrible school system. But even then, these kids still had a better time. So what is the problem? Well, honestly, it's a lot of different things. But generally, the state of the world and society, and the introduction of widespread internet usage and technology go hand in hand. Just imagine growing up as a kid in these years. Every time you're upset or your parents want you to shut up, they slap an iPad in your face. And hell, it works. 
There's nothing that your toys or traditional TV can do that can make you feel nearly as good and captivated as the iPad. Your parents are millennials, so as teenagers, they likely had a lot of access to the internet and early smartphones. So they don't see as much harm in just having technology and the algorithms influence and raise their kids. And so you go to school early on. All the kids around you are talking about the stuff on the internet that they all collectively know, furthering your interest and sense of needing this content. And boom, 2020 hits, and all your school is behind a screen. You have no choice but to just sit there through boring, mind-melting Zoom classes where you barely pay attention and come out exhausted. Any social life that you had before is gone, replaced with another screen. But developing a brain requires much more than that to stay afloat and stay healthily challenged and stimulated. After a year and a half passes, you finally get to go back into the real world, but it's not the same. Your friends have changed, society has changed, fear is widespread. The world that you once knew the world that you knew for your entire life is gone. Not only this, but after so much time of being forced to stay indoors, you don't really have a better choice but to be on your phone all the time, to go on TikTok and Instagram, to feel a semblance of familiarity and comfort and community. But it's not the same. It's never the same. You basically just lost two of many of these kids' most important and developmental years. Time where you should have developed as a person and learned how to really socialize and interact with the world. But no, you spent it on Zoom classes in your house with parents in a struggling economy who are probably doing all they could to stay afloat during this time. Is this not an incredibly saddening story? It's what many, many Generation Alpha kids are having to deal with, and it kind of explains why they're having such a hard time developmentally. But all this on top of the fact that you probably grew up with content like Cocomelon eroding away your attention span from your youngest days. As a kid in this day and age, you are set up in an incredibly hard place. I feel as though when people discuss this issue, they kind of shit talk these kids. But you must understand that this is an issue where there needs to be kindness and compassion towards the children involved. They didn't ask for this. They're a victim of their circumstance. And all this has to do with the parents. This should be clear to everybody. As unfortunate as it is, most millennial parents have to work full time since the economy in current times isn't good for having a sustainable family home, unless you're already financially well off. This leads to the children of this generation not being able to spend a lot of time with their parents, which is obviously something that they really, really need. I'm not a father, not even close, but in my personal opinion, children need their parents to spend time with them. They need to be nourished and talked to and taught about the world, and quite a lot too. But it seems that this isn't really happening for a lot of these children, which is incredibly saddening. Alongside school, which, as stated earlier, already kind of sucks, children should be taught by their parents different life lessons, or history lessons, or different supplemental things alongside their main education. This makes them well-rounded, educated adults. As parents, you're supposed to pass down your knowledge to your future generations, so they can learn to not make the same mistakes that you did, so they can do things better, so they can come into the world with more knowledge and be able to navigate it in the best way possible. But clearly, for a lot of Generation Alpha, that's simply not the case. Now, this may make you feel hopeless, and if it does, I do understand. But I don't mean to make this video to fill you with dread. I made this video to spread awareness and maybe even open the eyes of some parents who may be watching. Despite it feeling kind of unrelated at this point, I do also want to round about to what we talked about in the start. Now, while Skibbity Toilet in its original form may be a high quality series, the content around it is absolutely horrendous, and it's genuinely some of the worst content I've seen on the platform. Lots of it is definitely Elsagate to your content, while most of it is just pure brain rot, and incredibly annoying. And honestly, that's the type of Skibbity Toilet content that no one at all should be watching in the first place. But of course, these content farm channels will continue to mass produce content like this, since it makes them a ton of money, which is why it's up to us to damper their success. If you are a parent, or an older sibling, or anything, try to move your kid away from any of this sort of content. Obviously, it's an enormous ask, and a Herculean task, but my recommendation is just not letting children use YouTube at all. Rather, you should show them the media created for children, whether it's new stuff or media that you grew up with watching. This way you can ensure that your child is consuming nourishing and educational content that isn't going to hijack your child's dopamine receptor. Try to engage with and play with your child, no matter the age. The youngest generation alpha child is 11 years old. That's not too old to play with toys, to use imagination, to be a kid, and it's not too late either. The way that we prevent further children by being affected by this is to spread awareness whether it's this video or any of the other videos being made about Generation Alpha. 
What we need to do is have the parents of the future realize that you can't put a screen in front of your child's face and expect it to do all the work because it's harmful and the internet is actively predatory towards your children. And I'm talking purely from an algorithmic standpoint. Not to mention all of the actual predators who lurk on websites with children on them. It's honestly up to us to make a change. To boycott brands who are making content that's actually harmful for children. A lot of these YouTubers have merchandise that's being sold in big box stores like Walmart and Target. If you're a parent, don't give them your money. Do not support a business that's actively harming your child and is preying on them for profit. By no means should that ever be acceptable to anybody. These kids are the future of our planet. They're going to be the rulers of our world, and they absolutely need to be nourished in childhood and mentally healthy and emotionally brought up in a way that's nourishing and wholesome and isn't going to leave them depressed, burnt out, and overstimulated with an attention span that's no longer than five seconds without any sort of stimulation. We need to let kids be kids again. By letting your kids be on the internet, they're inadvertently exposed to the horrors of the world. And honestly, this may be a take that many disagree with. But I think younger kids don't need to know about all that stuff. They don't need to be burdened by the reality of war, the state of the planet, politics, any of it. They should be able to be happy. They should be able to live childhoods that are nourishing and enjoyable and be able to look back with nostalgia and be able to look back and say, I had a good childhood. Even if the world wasn't in the best state, I had a good childhood and I was happy and my parents made that happen. But that's not up to me. That's up to you. I know for a fact that I will practice everything that I preach in this video since I find it incredibly important. This is a topic that I'm very passionate about on account of the fact that I work with children. Uh, many of the jobs that I've had have been with young children and I've seen over the years the effects that the quarantine and types of content have had on these kids. And it's ugly. I feel almost a sense of responsibility to share this with parents across the world. I've got this platform, it's an incredibly rare and valuable thing that not many people have, and I want to use it for good. It's crucial for my generation to have an idea as to how we can prevent this, how we can prevent having another iPad generation. And honestly, as doom and gloom as I've sounded, I have hope in Generation C. Sure, this generation has been horrible in a lot of ways, and are mostly just as addicted to our devices as these kids are, but the difference is that at least we know now. We've seen what happens to the youth. And I'm sure that many of us who become parents want to prevent that. If slash when I have children, they will not have access to the internet. Not at all. The most they'll be able to get is maybe some streaming, but that'll be curated by myself. I've thought about this a lot, since it's a very real thing. As a parent, I would let my children use physical media, like DVDs and VHS. That way, content is limited. You know, you can't just go on and see everything there is to ever exist. You've got like 12 episodes of a show that you can watch over and over again, and kids love watching stuff over and over again. Also, as they age, I would not be giving them any sort of smart technology, except for a flip phone, assuming they still exist. I truly hope that this video goes into the right hands, because it honestly kind of took a lot out of me. It's very easy to get into a very dooming and gloomy mindset when talking about something like this, and when spending a lot of time researching and editing something about it. But I have hope. Hope that this video will go into the hands of the right person. Hope that at least one child will have a sort of parental change that will benefit them in the long term. Because this is more important than many of us even know. If we have a country, a, a world, led by people who are developmentally stunted and emotionally unavailable, things aren't going to go too well. And honestly, that scares me. But I really do feel as though it's not too late. Forever, there will be good parents. And I hope with messages like this, bad parents can kind of switch their methods around, and do their kids some good. Because at the end of the day, a lack of technology and overstimulation will overall just improve the quality of life of a child. And that is what I truly want. If you do feel so inclined after watching this, I would recommend that you spread this video to any parents you may know who may be struggling with this, or maybe are curious and have questions about the whole thing. Now, once we reach that point, I feel like things will really sort of start to get better. Sure, the world is in a crazy state, but perhaps if we last long enough, newer generations can actually usher in some change and some actual tranquility into the world. But again, that's up to you. Now, interestingly enough, as I produced this video, this actually became a trend. Um, there's many videos very similar to mine that came out um, when this video was being written, and that honestly is really good. But I feel like a lot of them really just missed the point. And honestly, I feel like as though a lot of the YouTubers who are talking about this don't really care or don't really care that much about the issue. It's kind of like what happened with Elsa Gate in 2023. There was a huge uproar of people who genuinely cared, but then became a trend. So people hopped on the trend to get views, 
and the message was muddied. And I really don't want that to happen here. I want to put out a hashtag, that being boycott brain rot. We can have kind of a slogan to go along with this movement, because at the end of the day, if overstimulating content is no longer viable to make because people aren't buying into it, methods will change. And if actual good holistic content is what's needed, these people will try and pivot. Sure, it's not a 100% fix, but it's something. And in a world where nothing's being done, we truly need something like that. I've been Raymundo2112. Thank you again today for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Stay safe, and I hope that you learned something, and that this video was useful.